Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Break Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, pharmacist, Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing and renewing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. And we love hearing from you on the Bright Side, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase Longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470. Ask about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $30 fee. You can be in business for yourself, have the longevity business, be part of the billion-dollar health care business, alternative health care and nutritional supplement business. 866-735-2470 is the phone number to call or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to take a look at truthnourishment.com, our shopping site. We've got herbal extracts and powders and some... Uh, our bergamot products are up, as well as some digestive enzymes and probiotics. TruthNourishment.com. If you haven't checked, uh, keep checking because we're adding new products all the time at TruthNourishment.com. Also, uh, also uh, TruthTreatments.com for our skin health products. TruthTreatments.com. All right. Welcome back to the bright side. We have been talking about well, fibromyalgia, we started talking about the, the craziness of the diagnostic model where you go into the doctor, you get interviewed, he, he uh, collects a bunch of symptoms and then puts it into a little box called a diagnosis. And then from that point forward, you are a diabetic or you have an autoimmune disease or you're suffering from this ailment or that ailment, this official diagnosis or that official diagnosis. None of it matters from a reversal perspective. That's the important point. Your diagnosis is irrelevant from a reversal perspective. It's only relevant from a doctor, pharmacomedical model, insurance company paradigm perspective. This is so important. A diagnosis is only relevant from a, uh, from a, a st- bureaucratic perspective. It's not relevant from a healing perspective. From a healing perspective, if you have arthritis or Alzheimer's disease, you've got to do exactly the same thing. We all have to do the same thing, no matter what our diagnosis is. If you have a diagnosis or if you're symptomatic, you just have to do it with more care and vigilance, obviously, than if you're not symptomatic. But it's the symptoms, not the name that you're dealing with. You can't treat a name. You can't treat a word. You can't treat a diagnosis. You treat symptoms. You reverse symptoms. You don't even treat them. You reverse symptoms. Treating, I don't even know what treating means, but we want to reverse is what we're looking for. Reversal is not cure. Cure is magic. Cure puts me in jail. If I say cure, if I say I'm going to cure cancer or this thing, this thing or that thing cures cancer, I go to jail. But I can say this reverses some kind of biochemical process. That won't put me in jail because reversal is science. Cure is magic. And when I talk about uh, reversal, I'm talking about everything's reversible. It's just the nature of the body to reverse. If something is going one way, it can go the other way. The reversal, uh, when we talk about reversal, basically what we're talking about, reversing breakdown into buildup. Those are the two processes that are happening. Everything in in the entire universe is up or down, empty or full, right or left. It's all polarity. 
And in the body, this polarity shows up as anabolism and catabolism, or one of the ways it shows up. There's lots of ways polarity show up in the body, but one of the ways is anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism meaning building, catabolism meaning breaking down. You're either net one way or net the other way, period. It's like a business. In your business, you're either in the red or in the black. You're not in, you could be in neutral, I suppose, but you're constantly in this flux of breaking down and building up. You may be net neutral, I suppose, but the point is, is you're constantly in this, two things are always happening. Break down, build up, break down, build up, break down, build up. What matters is the net. When you're sick, you're net breaking down, period. You can call it arthritis, you can call it Alzheimer's, or you can call it uh, gout, or you can call it multiple sclerosis. Any, whatever diagnosis you got, it's a sign that you're breaking down. That's why I always say there's only one disease, MBFA disease. My body is falling apart disease. It's the only disease. Your body's falling apart from a scientific reversal perspective. Now, from a medical perspective, insurance company perspective, yes, there's different diagnoses based on different parts of the body. Whatever specific part the breakdown is occurring in fastest, that, that'll be your diagnosis. But the problem is with these diagnoses, when the medical model is confronted with general conditions like fibromyalgia, it can't do anything because it's not local. It's the whole body. That's the classic. That's why I, I, I think of fibromyalgia as a poster child for what's wrong with the diagnostic model because it can't handle something like fibromyalgia. So you know what it does? It tells you you're crazy. If, you, if you're dealing with pain all over your body, it's not local, they can't diagnose it, they, or they can't target it to one specific area, they tell you you're crazy and they give you Prozac or they give you a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. But if you understand that you're just dealing with general inflammation and general deterioration and general toxicity, it makes perfect sense. Fibromyalgia does. The fact that fibromyalgia occurs in women way more than men is a major clue. Estrogen, which is the distinguishing, from a hormonal point of view anyway, the distinguishing biochemical between men and women, estrogen, um, estrogen levels are, or estrogen is associated with, infl- uh, with inflammation. And estrogen, uh, uh, women who have fibromyalgia tend to be high estrogen producers. And you don't have to be a high estrogen producer these days because estrogen is everywhere. And estrogen is really fascinating, misunderstood stuff. Estrogen is a revving up hormone. It's a stress management hormone. It's secreted when a woman in highest amounts, when a woman is under the greatest stress of her life, which is making a baby. So it's linked to the stress response. High estrogen producers are going to be at risk for lots of stress-induced kinds of issues. It's a revving up hormone. It's a growth substance. It speeds up cell division. It speeds up cell growth. It speeds up proliferation. Growth is the cell's default state. This is really important. When we think of growth, we think of, well, uh, we're not growing as well when we're sick or we're not growing as much when we're, uh, or, or the cells aren't growing as much uh, when we get older. It turns out that growth is the default state. Putting the brakes on growth, that's where the work comes in. Cells grow. They're, they're designed to grow. It's the breaking action that allows shapes to take place and, act, and uh, 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 choreography to occur. It's how the cells are controlled. It's kind of like, it's kinda like the, the breaking action carves up. The, 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 the rapid growth of cells. It sort of puts the brakes here, puts the brakes there, and creates shapes. Almost like a, the way a, 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 a sculptor carves out pieces from clay. The breaking action is critical to making cells work correctly. When cells hyperproliferate, that's where you run into problems. Cancer is the classic example. Inflammation is a classic example. When cells hyperproliferate, that's where problems occur. Estrogen is a proliferative substance. You see where we're going here. The hyperproliferation is something you don't want. If, you're, if you uh, add in proliferative substances, substances that makes things proliferate, makes things grow, you run into problems. That's why the sun, is, that's why the sun gets a bad reputation as well. So it's not a bad thing. The sun is proliferative. And uh, both the sun and estrogen have very interesting effects on the skin. Uh, we'll talk about estrogen, fibromyalgia, and take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're 
are back on the break side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through, through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, and 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You can purchase Longevity products at brightsideben.com. We've got uh, archives of probably, I think, going on nine years of of Brightside episodes and a search engine that you can search various topics on. You can also purchase Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well, or call 866-735-2470 for more information. And don't forget to take a look at our web, our shopping sites, truthnourishment.com, and our skin health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, so uh, estrogen, super misunderstood stuff. Estrogen is a growth, stimulating stress, amp you up, rev things up, substance. It's associated with inflammation and pain. And, it, and it's not just estrogen. It's the breakdown products of estrogen that are super strong. Estrogen is a strong hormone. And when I was compounding estrogen products in the pharmacy, we had to be super, super careful not to be even off by a milligram, which is like a, like a speck. If you were off by a speck, you could create havoc in a woman's biochemistry because estrogen revs things up. And estrogen breakdown products rev things up even more. And almost all health challenges have some component of this revving up, uh, this hormonal revving up of the biochemistry. Revving things up is not a good thing because growth has to be controlled in the body. The, the default state of the body cells is to grow. That growth has to be controlled. And this is why stimulating forces like the sun and hormones and sugar can be so problematic in terms of cancer, in terms of inflammatory disease, and in terms of pain, and in terms of fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is a, the manifestation of what happens when estrogen runs amok and the breakdown products of estrogen run amok. That's what fibromyalgia and chronic pain are about. Chronic pain um, associated with fibromyalgia. There's other reasons for chronic pain, but chronic pain that goes head to toe, that's mysterious and unknown, and nobody can figure out what's causing it, is related to breakdown products as well as to estrogen as well as its breakdown products. And this hyperstimulation effect can affect the the, the uh, skin the same way the sun's hyperstimulation stimulation effect of effect can af- affect the skin. The skin is receptive to energy coming from the sun. Does that mean that you want to stay out of the sun? No, it means you want to be careful with the sun. You don't want to burn. Likewise with the hormone estrogen. Estrogen can have some important beneficial effects on the skin, but you don't want to go crazy with it, and you certainly don't want to be putting it in your body from outside. That is with estrogen medication. Estrogen's main job is to grow a baby and to prepare and cultivate the environment for the fetus. It makes things happen in terms of growth and life. It's not a youth-promoting hormone. It's a make-things-happen hormone. See the difference here? Youth is not about purely about making things happen. Estrogen is about making things happen. The pharmacomedical model wants to sell us estrogen, so it tells you that making things happen is the same as youth. No. Making things happen in a controlled way is the same as youth. Making things happen while it's being the control mechanism is healthy and strong. That's what happens with youth, not just making things happen. You can't just make things happen in the body hormonally or with drugs. You play with fire when you do that. And indeed, this is why estrogen is on the FDA's known to cause cancer list. This simplistic notion that estrogen is somehow associated with youth because it makes things happen is, uh, is unfair to women and bad biochemistry. Estrogen is actually, as it turns out, because of its link to inflammation, estrogen is pro-catabolic. It increases tissue decay because it also upregulates the breakdown of tissue. So it upregulates everything, including the breakdown of tissue and including infl- inflammation. Estrogen, uh, inflammatory, the, the inflammatory nature of estrogen is well known. It's ironic how it's, it is just from to biochemists, it's just as well known as the so-called youth-promoting effects of estrogen are known to the medical world. Biochemists all know that estrogen is pro-inflammatory. And by the way, estrogen, the, the, one of the big problems with estrogen is there's no estrogen. Estrogen, estro for estrus, gen for genesis, the beginning of estrus, which is fertility. Estrogen is a 
baby making hormone. It's not a fertility hormone. It won't get you pregnant, but once you're pregnant, it builds up estrogen. It builds up the baby. Now, interestingly, if your estrogen is too high, you're actually not going to estrogen is birth control. That's what's in the birth control pill. So estrogen is anti libido and it's anti conception, but it's pro growth of the fetus. That's why when a woman is pregnant, her estrogen goes is high. But it's not, you know, when you're when a woman's estrogen is high during pregnancy, if she's healthy, she'll be in a good mood. She'll be, her skin will glow. There's a real healthy appearance if the woman is taking care of herself and doesn't have any sickness. And that's why estrogen gets this reputation for being associated with youth and all the good things, all the youth. And, but what's what's being missed is that estrogen is controlled by the body. You can't duplicate it. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as bioidentical hormones. That's not a thing. That's a made-up thing. That's not a real thing. There's no such biochemical uh, category called bioidentical hormones. It's made up, and that's a term that's made up in the marketing department of, of drug companies because you can't be bioidentical. There's no way. The network of hormones, the, the balance of hormones between the, the breakdown hormones, the build-up hormones, and the balance of growth versus breaking, all of these things are, are tightly regulated in the body, and you can't just throw estrogen at the system. So estrogen is actually just a shape. It's, not, it's a, a fundamental shape. All chemicals are shape. All molecules are shapes. Molecules are nothing more than tinker toys in specific conformations, in specific shapes. Estrogen is a family of shapes, which itself is part of the cholesterol family of shapes. Estrogen is basically cholesterol. Slight digression here. Cholesterol, as, a, as the master shape of estrogen, among other things, testosterone and progesterone and, and the DHEA and vitamin D, is a ma- major master shape. In fact, I would go so far as to say cholesterol is the major master shape in the body. I can't think of one that's more major as a master shape, as a family. The cholesterol family, if you will, all of the shapes that come off of cholesterol or the derivatives derivatives of the cholesterol are the most fundamental and the most life-giving in terms of animal life, um, uh, animal life-giving molecules in the body. And to poison that master family of shapes is pure idiocy from a biochemical standpoint. Now, your doctor, from a clinical standpoint, may say, oh, we know it lowers heart disease by blah, 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 2%, 2.5%. And that's the difference between a biochemist and a clinical chemist. Your body is not clinical. It's bio. The chemistry in your body is not clinical chemistry. It's biochemistry. Clinical chemistry is an approximation based on statistics. So they, can, they feel very justified saying we can wreak havoc on your biochemistry because we want to fix your clinical chemistry. They're very comfortable doing that. That's what the modern medical model is about. Now, I would say that there's probably a lot of other incentives that have nothing to do with our health that is behind this focus on clinical chemistry versus biochemistry. Because you can't really do anything good to biochemistry with drugs. You can do stuff supposedly with clinical chemistry with drugs. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central, and 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You'll find longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have a couple lines open, so we'll get to you here when we come back from... Uh, well, I'm going to do a couple news stories, and then uh, then we'll get your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. This is from the International Journal of Molecular Science. Keloid and hypertrophic scars are, are the result of chronic inflammation in the reticular dermis. All right, let's translate that. Keloids, which are a really nasty scar that forms uh, somewhat spontaneously in some people. They're guys who get it right when they shave. In other words, when they cut themselves or when the skin is irritated in any way, they get these horrible scars where the connective tissue rises to the top and you get it's a, uh, just a hard piece of tissue that never goes away. Hypertrophic scars or scars that are caused by, guess what? Hyper 
hypertrophic, meaning too much growth. That's what we were talking about earlier. Too much growth, hypertrophy. Hypertrophic scars and keloids are the result of chronic inflammation. What does that mean? In the dermis, uh, what does that mean? Well, inflammation disturbs the chemistry. Remember, the breaking of the chemicals, the breaking of the collagen production, the breaking of the cellular repair, the breaking of the scar or of the healing of the wound is more important than the growth. If the breaking is off because of the inflammation, the growth, you get overgrowth, and that's where keloid and, and keloids and hypertrophic scars, that is scars that are raised up. These are inflammatory conditions. Inflammation from um, d- uh, the digestive tract, well, typically from foods. And also a lack of anti-inflammatory breaking substances. One of the most important breaking substances in the body is vitamin D. Vitamin D and vitamin A are both breaking substances and stimulating substances. How do you like that? This is the intelligence of vitamin A and vitamin D, which are actually hormones. They will bur- put the brakes on things when they need to be braked, and they'll g- stimulate growth when they need to stimulate growth. It, we call them normalizers in biochemistry because they restore cellular activity to normal levels. Vitamin D deficiency is associated with keloids. Vitamin D deficiency is associated with scarring, hypertrophic scarring. So uh, one of the first things you want to do is make sure you're getting enough vitamin D. Interesting African-Americans who are notoriously deficient in vitamin D are more likely to keloid. So get yourself some sunshine, the best form of vitamin D, if you're dealing with keloids or you're, you don't want to deal with keloids and you don't want to have a hypertrophic scar from a wound. Interestingly, people who have surgeries will, or who have scarring or who have uh, stitches will be told not to go out in the sun, not to get sunshine. Wrong. Bad information, which you don't want. They're afraid of pigmentation issues, hyperpigment, uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. What you don't want to do is you don't want to overdo it. Remember, the sun is stimulating. You don't want to overdo it. But a little bit of sun can be very helpful for preventing scars if you have stitches or you have a surgical wound. Get out in the sun. Also, essential fatty acids play a role. Those are molecules of inflammation, anti-inflammation. So for folks who are dealing with scar, uh, with hypertrophic scars or keloids, get on your ultimate EFAs. If you have any digestive problems that keep you from absorbing your EFAs, you've got to correct those also. And you might as well throw in the other fatty vitamins too, vitamins E, which is powerfully anti-inflammatory, and then uh, vitamin K, which is kind of an interesting one. We should probably spend some time talking about vitamin K. I think I'll do that hopefully in the near future, because vitamin K is kind of confusing to people. Um, it's got so many different roles to play, but uh, certainly anti, uh, the anti-inflammatory essential fatty acids, omega-6s and omega-3s in that balance, and then also uh, vitamin D from the sun, vitamin E, and probably wouldn't hurt you to get some fatty minerals like selenium and zinc. If you are dealing with keloids or hypertrophic scars, using uh, topical vitamin C can also help you, using topical vitamin C as healing is occurring if you are prone towards keloids or, or hypertrophic scars. All right, I want to just read this real quickly. One of the things that's happening in the, world of, uh, in the world of medicine is the recognition that the psyche plays a major role in how the body shows up. Hello, where have you heard that before? It's called mind-body. And mind-body is becoming a thing in medicine. There's actually a brand new, not brand new, but only a couple years old branch of dermatology called psycho. Dermatology is the subspecialty of uh, dermatology and psychiatry. It's a blend of psychiatry and dermatology. There's an association for neuro, for psychoneurocutaneous medicine of North America. Psychoneurocutaneous medicine. There's actually a website. You can Google psychoneurocutaneous medicine. Uh, according to a review in the American Family Physician, a psychodermatologic disorder is a disorder or a condition that involves the interaction between mind and the skin. How do you like that? Mind, they're not saying mind-body. They're saying mind-skin. The skin has a mind of its own, essentially. You know, your skin is like a brain, too, by the way. It's an extension of your brain, and there's a tremendous amount of neural action in your skin. So all of this makes perfect sense. If you understand the concept of mind-body and mind as body or body as mind, it's Candace Pert, who wrote the book The Molecules of, the, of, the, the Molecules of Emotion, said that the mind or the body is the mind made manifest. How do you like that? All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to our friend Lydia in Cleveland. You're becoming a real regular here. Lydia, I like that. What's going on? All right, thank you. <laughs> well, 
I um, wanted to, I just learned about this boron mineral, and I wanted to know what you think about taking straight borax for it. Uh, why don't you to get your boron? Yeah. Boron is an amazingly important and underappreciated element for women especially. It's uh-huh. got some very interesting um, uh, uh, estrogenic kinds of effects. Uh, also, also male, it's got interesting and, uh, uh, sex hormone effects. And it's a very under, it's most, there's no really such thing as a boron deficiency um, because boron's pretty much found ubiquitously in, in produce and vegetables. But you, you never know. Um, I, I don't, there may be, maybe people are dealing with, sub, with uh, boron deficiency when they have hormone problems. Borax is a mineral that contains boron. You know, min- uh-huh. I, actually, let me rephrase that. I don't know if you heard us talking a few weeks ago, we were talking about elements. Boron is an element. The body okay. uses elements. The distinction between elements and minerals is one that kind of it goes under the radar and it causes a lot of confusion, not making the distinction. The body needs the element boron. It seems to be involved in hormone, in hormone health and hormone balance. Borax is a mineral that contains boron. So uh, I'm not, it, it's used in detergents, it's used to make cosmetics, it's used to make glazes, it's used uh, as medicine, it's used as, uh, it's a fire retardant, it's used in metal, metallurgy. I mean, there's a lot of industrial uses for it. Uh, I don't know necessarily, I've never really heard of using borax as a nutritional substance. I'm not sure why that would be a problem. It's just a mineral, sodium uh-huh. tetraborate, so I don't think it would be an issue. Um, but uh, you can get boron supplements. You get well, no, I went online and looked. There's a lot of them, but I, I was told from my friend to, to take just straight borax. It's just a mineral. <laughs> I mean, you can wash just, your hands with it, too. No, I mean, just weird. Yeah, you can but, wash your hands with it. Yeah, it's just a mineral is basically all it is, and that's why they use it in um, cleansers as a scrubby aid. You know how you have, like, a little mild exfoliant? It acts like a scrubby, kind of scrubby mineral sort of substance. Hey, uh, hang on, lady. We've we got to take a break. Hey, sure. We'll come back. Okay, good. Sure. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side Lines Open, 844-236-6010. We'll be back after this. Talking to Lydia, Lydia in Cleveland. Lydia, what's yeah. going on about borax? You want to supplement with borax? Is that what you're asking me about? Or... Yeah, that's correct. Uh huh. I mean, it, it's there's no reason why you wouldn't it. Boron itself. Now, remember, do you understand what I'm talking about when I say the distinction between a mineral and an element? The body uses right. elements. Minerals mm-hmm. contain elements. They're delivery systems for elements. Boron, or, I'm sorry, borax is a mineral delivery system for boron and uh there's no reason why you wouldn't use it and it does have some interesting health benefits uh, especially around hormones but also around inflammation folks have arthritis and joint problems may benefit i wouldn't there's no reason not to but boron's pretty easy i'm, I'm gonna try i'm gonna try it and see if i can take it i know it doesn't taste too good from what i hear what are you gonna just do no put it in a capsule or something a, oh that would be a little bit better to do that that would be a yeah. better idea than drinking it but it, that's the suggestion is i think it's just it, salty but. is the only thing Oh, okay. Well, I, I'll yeah, see. Yeah, parasites will help clean the parasites out, too. Well, I, yeah. I'm working on the cleansing. Um, yeah, it's a cleansing. Year. It's a cleansing deal. <laughs> I, right. I, I liked about a couple of days ago your show was about that. And you don't really about go over what? the details about cleansing. A couple of days, Thursday you talked about cleansing. Yeah, I had a gal really, on. Duck, uh-huh. really gone, so. That was good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, was good. I just like a lot of that because that's what I'm going through now. <laughs> It's just Trying I listen to, to you all the time. It's, it would be convenient if you could work on that. No, I'm just kidding. Say that again? I didn't hear you. Well, because I listen to you all the time, it would be really oh. nice if you were to to go focus on, you know, how we can cleanse our bodies. Because you know what? If every if all the problems are it would have to do with our gut. Toxicity. And having to clean our, you know, and having to, you know, work on it. And that's what we should be talking about a lot. Well, there's about, three ways. To, are, there's three yeah. ways. The three main ways the body cleans itself out of the bowels out of the mm-hmm. liver, and out of the kidney. Basically, okay. you know, those are the, basically the three ways. First thing you want stuff coming out of the bowels regularly, being regular is a mm-hmm. major detox strategy. And then uh, keeping your bile clean, your liver, your gallbladder. And also, you know what else is de- uh, one of the best detoxification uh, mechanisms in the body is exhaling, exhalation, blowing it off. <sighs> yeah, yeah. The breathing. The body relaxes no, as that. it exhales. Go ahead. No, I do work on that deep breathing 
Yeah, yeah but exhale is even more important than the inhale. Exhale. No, just by longer. exhaling, you'll find yourself relaxing. You can actually, if you exhale, it's hard not to relax. Muscles automatically yeah. relax. You feel it? Yeah. When you no, just, I just exhale, did. blow all that toxicity <laughs> out. Think of getting all that, all that toxic, toxic stuff out of your body. All right, Lydia, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Have a beautiful day. Good to talk to you. Let's go to uh, Shelly in Florida and say good morning. What's up, Shelly? How you doing? Hey. Hey, hey. This is What's Shirley. Up? How are you? I know. What's, oh, Shirley, you said? Yeah, I called you this morning, and I've been waiting to talk to you, um, okay. and I'm so glad I got you. Okay. So oh, you're the gal like, who called me on, on the phone this morning, right? Right. I had um, I talked to you last year, and you gave me a lot of information. I'll make it short because I know you have okay. a ton of people. Yes. I had gotten kept getting skinnier, 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 and I wound up. I had diverticulitis. Wound up in Mayo because I got so skinny, and the doctor kept giving me antibiotics, and I kept saying there's something wrong. Anyway, long story short, they found out that for about a year, my small intestines were so inflamed from all the antibiotics that I wasn't mm. receiving any nutrients, and my body was mm. like cannibalizing itself. Well, this is three years later. I've come a long, long way. I'm doing well. Nice. But, uh, Congratulations. It, it, yeah, thank God. It's been a battle, let me tell you. It's been a battle of the mind, too. But okay. um, I take, um, I want to tell you what I'm doing because I, um, I, it affected my skin, and I had perfect skin my whole life. And for okay. something to affect my skin is, is bothering me. Anyway, um, I'm taking, I, I went off of my estrogen because I feel like that was kind of poison. I'm still taking progesterone. Um, I take vitamin C, vitamin D, E, zinc, cod liver oil, pumpkin seed, a, evening primrose oil, and I was concerned about going off of the estrogen. Should I take salt palmetto because I don't want to lose hair? No, nah, just get on a bunch of essential fatty acids, but don't, you're not, I, I, you're not getting an omega-3 source from what you just okay. said. So get yourself okay. on a good balanced omega-6 to omega-3, Udo's blend or uh, Ultimate EFAs from Longevity if you want to do capsules. Okay. I would be do, focusing more on that. Make sure you're exercising if you're not already. Yeah, do some I kind of exercise. Idea. Okay, you got to move that the circulatory system. There's a very important relationship between the lymph system and digestive toxicity and problems with estrogen and building. So you might want to focus there, too, moving your body around if you're not already doing it. Uh, also more protein. And then building nutrients like zinc, sulfur, okay. MSM sulfur, Bone broth, bone broth protein, gelatin. Yeah, uh, I make bone broth. Good for you. High hyaluronic acid, uh, glucosamine, okay. glutamine powder. He has a ton you could do. But you're on the right track. You sounds like you're doing great. Congratulations. Well, let me ask you because I've, I've learned this, a lot of this from you more than the doctor. Let me tell you that. But the red angiome that I never had, yeah. that is growth from, from uh, um, estrogen also, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it can be. Estrogen, again, is, has a pro-inflammatory effect. Did you hear us talking this morning about how right. it's pro-inflammatory? Cherry angiomas, little, little tiny red spots, those are signs of breakdowns in the tissue that's in the connective tissue where the, those blood vessels are. So, yes, the, the, that can definitely have to do, that can have a lot to do with estrogen, uh, estrogen toxicity. If you're going to do estrogen, make sure you're taking care of the clearing of estrogen and the detoxification of estrogen. The phase one, phase two we talked about. I'm, I'm going to talk about it some more. I'm not done talking about that. The whole thing in the liver. Yeah, did you hear me talking about all that stuff in the liver? Yeah. yeah. But you know, I'm going to talk more about that. that. And then also having regular oh, bowel movements. Go ahead. I'm well, sorry. Well, I do that. But I do that without a problem. But since I went off, I was only on a .025. They had knocked it down to that much. And since I went off of it, I really totally feel better. So I'm wondering if plant estrogens will take .025. Hey, they, I wouldn't mess around. Time. But, yeah, if you want to do something like uh, we'll, we'll talk tomorrow about some of these plant estrogen kinds of substances that you can do, flavones and isoflavones, like from soy. Uh, but it doesn't sound like you're doing bad. I, would, I wouldn't mess around with it. Just stay off the estrogen and see what happens. Okay, and I also you don't need to replace to it. Essential fatty acids act like estrogen. Do you know this? Well, EFAs you know, I, I've heard have an estrogenic you. effect. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was going to say, and I take thyroid, I take armor, and I no, take 25 so milligrams. So your estrogen is too hot. Your, your, your estrogen is too high, probably. I'm guessing you're, you're probably inflamed from too much estrogen. What was your body type like? Were you buxom, um, round, buxom, well, I was, or lean? No, I was always thin. Always thin. Always thin. Not, uh, not overly thin. And then I started to gain a little bit of weight, and that's when they told me I had um, 
uh, thyroid. I mean, not a, not a lot of weight, like eight pounds on me, which was yeah. unusual. I Got weigh I'm five two, and I weigh one. Uh, How are your menstrual cycles? Um, I've had a hysterectomy thirty years okay. ago, so that's well, why I'm go. on the hormones. Yeah. There you go, Shelley. You take things out, and that throws in the female reproductive system. That totally throws off your hormones. Yeah, but it sounds like you're on the right track. Stick with the fats, the good fats, the fatty minerals, the building minerals. Lay off of sugar as best as you can. I know. Yeah, I, I understand how hard that is. But, but as best as you can, and certainly if you're going to do sugar, stay away from the processed foods that have the sugar and stick to, like, fruits. At least you'll get some nutrients there. Um, right. Although I'm not a big fan of too much fruit. Hey, i got to go, Sean. I want to get one more call Thank in. Have so a beautiful day. Okay. Thanks for your call. Okay. All right. Pat in New York, you get the last word today. What's going on? Ben? That would be me. What's going on, Pat? Ben, ch- yes, sir. Chicken foot Paul here. Chicken foot. Where you been? Long yeah, time. Can I be real bad, buddy? What oh, I my do? gosh. Oh, my goodness. You were going to send me some chicken feet before I forget. Did you ever do that? No. No, you know, you know we didn't have a deal. I, I just called in and told you where to get them. For oh, I thought call. you were going to get me some chicken feet. I forgot. That, that was a long That was years ago. Have I not talked to you for years? I still listen. I got every, I listen to every one of your shows. Ben. All right, all right. Yeah, you know what's freaking, the best way to get rid of that? Do you have the poison ivy like you've been scratching for a while, or did you just get it? I got an initial bout. It almost went away, and then it came back again, and now I got it worse than ever. Turpentine. Do you know about turpentine? It dissolves the resin. No. Turpentine will dissolve the resin. It's not so great for your skin, but if you're really going crazy, it dissolves the resin. Uh, calamine, zinc oxide. Topically, uh, something called, uh, ben- uh, uh, what's it called? It's a combination of Benadryl and Calamine, Caladryl. Caladryl. So you can get some How about Caladryl uh, vinegar? Uh, it might dilute some of the resin. You know, it's, it's a resin. It's a topical. It's not a systemic condition. It's a topical condition caused by a resin. There isn't much you can do nutritionally, but topically, we used to use turpentine, you know, as yucky as that is, but it's better than going crazy. I, I don't care. How'd you get the poison uh, ivy? What were you doing? What's that? Clear and blush on this place that's uh, been uh, deserted for five years, you know? Uh, out right there in Syracuse? Bit. Where are you? You're in upstate New York, aren't you? Yeah, Buffalo area. Buffalo area. All right, Pat, be good. I got to go. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And thank you to all my Brightside listeners. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Love you to join the Brightside Ben team, so click on the Join the Team link or call 866-735-2470 for more info. And don't forget to take a look at truthnourishment.com and truthtreatments.com for our truth health products. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you later. Bye for now.